Now that the impeachment committees are starting to release the transcripts from the witness testimony they've already taken behind closed doors, it's starting to seem clear that they think they've got it down. They've got the basics of what happened. The core allegations at the center of the impeachment, they feel like they've got the plot. They've got all these mutually corroborating witnesses. How many more people do you need to tell you all the same story? Well, the House has requested testimony for some additional White House officials, including one that really piqued my interest today. We'll be talking about that on tomorrow's show. Um, but as the closed-door deposition part of the impeachment proceedings broadly starts to wind down, there, of course, are two big, big questions that are going to determine the president's ultimate fate. One is whether the public testimony part of this may shift public opinion even more decisively against the president here, whether it may ultimately shake some of the reflexive Republican support for the president. The second factor is even more instrumental to the president's fate, which is whether Republican senators may ultimately find the behavior that has been uncovered in this impeachment inquiry um, could ultimately be too much for even them to stomach. If you're looking for a circumstance where the president of the United States was threatening the Ukraine with cutting off aid unless they investigate his political opponent, you would be very disappointed. That does not exist. Senator Lindsey Graham just a couple of weeks ago. Phew! Relief. Obviously, it would be terrible if we had the president threatening Ukraine with cutting off military aid unless they investigated for him. Luckily, nothing like that has turned up. Well, now, of course, that is absolutely what has turned up and what is now essentially consensus testimony from all of the witnesses whose testimony we've been able to see. And so here's the headline in The New York Times tonight. Key witness revises testimony citing quid pro quo with Ukraine. Ambassador Gordon Sondland says he told Ukrainians aid was held up over inquiry demand. Gordon Sondland, the envoy to the EU, said he told Ukrainians, the Ukrainians, they needed to comply with investigative requests by Rudy Giuliani. Here's the Washington Post tonight. With revised testimony, Sondland ties Trump to quid pro quo. In a supplemental declaration to his earlier testimony, the ambassador to the EU said that aid was linked to the opening of an investigation that could damage 2020 presidential candidate Joe Biden. Yesterday, the impeachment committees released testimony from the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Yovanovitch, who was fired basically as part of this scheme to try and get Ukraine to help Trump with his reelection effort. They also released testimony from Michael McKinley, who was a senior State Department official who quit the State Department after more than 30 years of service in protest of the way that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the administration more broadly has used and abused State Department officials like Yovanovitch, despite the fact that they've done nothing wrong and done nothing to deserve it. Well, today we got the full testimony released from another senior Trump administration official who resigned when this scandal broke out. Kurt Volker was President Trump's envoy to Ukraine. He resigned as soon as he was summoned to testify to the impeachment inquiry. We got his full testimony today. We also got 65 pages of very tiny print printouts of text messages from Ambassador Volker today, and they were fascinating. We also today got the full testimony that had been delivered on October 17th by EU Ambassador Gordon Sondland. He had been sort of tasked by the president with carrying out this scheme in Ukraine, despite the fact that Ukraine isn't in the EU and therefore wasn't part of his remit as an ambassador. Gordon Sondland was a major Trump inaugural donor. That appears to have been how he got this ambassadorship in the first place. He'd previously testified in a way that seemed sort of positive for President Trump. He testified previously, quote, let me state clearly, inviting a foreign government to undertake investigations for the purpose of influencing a U.S., an upcoming U.S. election would be wrong. Withholding foreign aid in order to pressure a foreign government to take such steps would be wrong. I did not and would not ever participate in such undertakings. That's what he said in the first instance. But in advance of his testimony being made public today, just yesterday, Ambassador Gordon Sondland approached the committees with a um, <coughs> revision of his earlier statement. Um, in contrast to that key claim by him in his earlier testimony, now he does recollect, actually, that not only did the U.S. government condition foreign aid to Ukraine on them helping the White House in the president's forthcoming reelection effort, but actually he was part of it. Yeah, Gordon Sondland absolutely admitting that, yeah, he did participate in that. He helped carry it out. I didn't mean what I said before. He told the committee in this revised testimony, quote, 
I've reviewed the opening statement of Ambassador William Taylor. I've also reviewed the opening statement of Tim Morrison. These two opening statements have refreshed my recollection about certain conversations in early September 2019. The conversations described in Ambassador Taylor and Mr. Morrison's opening statements have refreshed my recollections about conversations involving the suspension of U.S. aid. Quote, I do now recall a conversation on September 1st in Warsaw with Mr. Yermak, a top aide to the Ukrainian president. Quote, this brief pull aside conversation followed a larger meeting involving Vice President Pence and President Zelensky. Quote, after that large meeting, I now recall speaking individually with Mr. Yermak, where I said that resumption of U.S. aid would likely not occur until Ukraine provided the public anti-corruption statement that we had been discussing for many weeks. And when he says the anti-corruption statement, we know from the context here, we know in part from the huge raft of text messages that were just released by the committees today, that when Ambassador Sondland, even in his revised testimony, calls it a public anti-corruption statement, we know he was well aware that what he was demanding of the Ukrainian government was that they announce investigations that were specifically being demanded of them by Rudy Giuliani and President Trump, and they were investigations that were designed to help President Trump's domestic political considerations. I mean, here, for example, it's all, I mean, we've got it now. Here's a three-way text conversation between Gordon Sondland and Kurt Volker, the Ukraine envoy, uh, and another Ukrainian official. The Ukrainian government at this point has sent over a draft statement they're proposing that their president could make, announcing vaguely that Ukraine will look into interference in political processes of the U.S. and a transparent and unbiased investigation. It's these sort of general statements. Kurt Volker and Gordon Sondland then intervene aggressively to say, no, 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 that's not enough. The statement has to be more specific than that. You have to include that the investigations you're launching are into Burisma, where Hunter Biden was on the board, and the 2016 U.S. elections, where we're going to claim that Ukraine interfered in the Trump-Clinton race rather than Russia having done it. I mean, their text message to the guy in the Ukrainian government literally says, following is text with insert at the end for two key items. Meaning we are making sure these named investigations that Trump wants are going to be in the Zelensky statement. I mean, they're writing the Zelensky statement for the Ukrainian government, making sure that the investigations are in there by name. And, and Sondland's trying to claim that he didn't know what the investigation was about. I mean, here's Gordon Sondland and Kurt Volker talking about it directly. Again, Gordon Sondland looks like POTUS call tomorrow. I spoke directly to Zelensky and gave him a full briefing. He's got it. Kurt Volker, good. Had breakfast with Rudy this morning, teeing up a call with Yermak on Monday. Must have helped. Most important is for Zelensky to say that he will help investigation. And here's Volker and Sondland talking about it amongst themselves. Again, Gordon Sondland. Hey, did you connect with Andre? Volker, not yet. We will talk with Bill and call him later today. Want to know our status on asking them to investigate? Gordon Sondland, good thought. Sondland, do we still want Zelensky to give us an unequivocal draft with 2016 and Burisma? Kurt Volker, that is the clear message so far. I mean, it's just, that's it. It's, that's, there it is. I mean, the political impact here is clear as day, right? I mean, the closest the president had to any sort of defense, backup, toehold in terms of explaining what he was trying to do and leveraging this other country to give him political help. I mean, it wasn't great to begin with. Sondland had already testified there definitely was a quid pro quo with Ukraine when it came to them trying to get a meeting in the White House. They couldn't get that meeting unless they announced these investigations. Sondland had already admitted that in his earlier testimony. The only place he tried to draw the line in a way that might be more helpful to Trump was on the issue of military aid. Sondland said in his earlier testimony, no, whatever we did with that meeting, there was definitely no withholding of military aid to try to get these investigations out of them. Of course not. That would be terrible. I would never be involved in something like that. Well, now, recognizing that his role in this has been exposed by many other witnesses, Ambassador Sondland's recollection has been refreshed, and now he is admitting even to that, yes, it was a quid pro quo for the Ukraine military aid, Although I will say, even in his revised statement, it appears that Mr. Sondland is still not telling the whole truth. In his revised testimony today, Sondland is still sort of trying to be cute about his own culpability here and maybe the president's. 
He says in his revised statement today, quote, with respect to the September 1st Warsaw meeting, the conversations described in Ambassador Taylor's and Mr. Morrison's opening statements have refreshed my recollection about conversations involving the suspension of U.S. aid, which have become public only days earlier. I always believed that suspending aid to Ukraine was ill-advised, although I did not know and still do not know when, why, or by whom the aid was suspended. Really? You don't know who suspended the military aid? Never heard a single thing in the course of your government service as to who had ordered the military aid suspended? Didn't have any idea where that came from or why that was being done? You sure? I mean, you just admitted that you told Ukraine why it was being done. You told Ukraine that why it was happening was because they hadn't committed to those investigations that Giuliani had asked them for. In terms of who did it and whether or not you knew who ordered the withholding of the military aid, go back to those text messages. I mean, July 18th, 2019, 1019 a.m. Text from Bill Taylor to Gordon Sondland. OMB, the Office of Management and Budget at the White House on a secure video teleconference just now said that all security assistance to Ukraine is frozen per a conversation with Mulvaney and POTUS. And then Bill Taylor completes his text. Over to you, Gordon. (laughs) Whereupon Gordon Sondland responds, all over it. So here he is notified in writing and he responds in mid-July that per POTUS, per the president of the United States, all security assistance to Ukraine is being withheld. And even now, with revised testimony trying to say, hmm, I still don't know when, why, or by whom the aid was suspended, I mean, we've simultaneously got the evidence that shows that he knows exactly who suspended that aid. And he knew why. We know that because he told the Ukrainians why. So this guy was the best hope that President Trump had among the high-level witnesses who have testified in the impeachment inquiry. He didn't do much good for the president when he testified a couple of weeks ago, right? That, yeah, Rudy Giuliani was asking for investigations. Ukraine wasn't going to get a White House meeting unless they announced those investigations. It already wasn't good from this guy a couple of weeks ago. Now, today, any last thing he might have been able to provide the president is also gone, with him now admitting that he also personally conveyed to them that they weren't going to get their military aid or their White House meetings unless they coughed up those investigations. And he put it in writing and got specific as to which investigations they specifically had to announce, including definitely, let me spell it out for you, the one linked to Joe Biden's son. I mean, this is really bad. This feels cooked. Serving top U.S. diplomat in Ukraine, Bill Taylor, testifies this was a corrupt quid pro quo. The hardline super hawk national security guy who came in to replace Fiona Hill, as friendly as he tried to be to Trump, he also confirmed that, yes, this was a corrupt quid pro quo. Now, the serving ambassador to the EU, the guy who's not by any stretch of an imagination, you know, deep state, this guy who's been a government employee for all of five minutes since he coughed up a million dollars to the Trump inaugural, this guy who's only in his job because he gave money to Trump and is a loyal Trumpy, he too is now confirming that this was a corrupt quid pro quo. And if I'd given the impression earlier that it wasn't, it's just because I forgot. The president's hand-selected personal envoy to Ukraine, Kurt Volker, we can see him committing the quid quid pro quo in writing, in communications that he turned over to the impeachment proceedings, right? Here's Volker, quote, heard from the White House, assuming President Zelensky convinces Trump he will investigate, we'll get to the bottom of what happened in 2016, we will nail down a date for a visit to Washington. Good luck. He's texting the Ukrainian government, by the way, you're only getting your visit if you cough up those investigations. And there it is in black and white. And of course, there's the president's own words himself, right? He's got people wearing these read the transcript t-shirts at his rallies now. The transcript shows the president asking for investigations into his political rivals and other politically convenient, weird conspiracy theory topics. He asked for those things as the favor that he needs, though, when the Ukrainian president asked him about sending him some javelin missiles. I mean, it's cooked. (laughs) All of the evidence says the same thing. All of the witnesses says the same thing. There's only one story here, and it's been corroborated from every possible angle. I mean, in terms of whether or not the president did it, it's done. I mean, at least here on Earth One, it is done. If you're looking for a circumstance where the president of the United States was threatening the Ukraine with cutting off aid unless they investigated his political opponent, you would be very disappointed. 
No one who is looking for that is disappointed anymore. <laughs> Because not only is there a raft of all unanimous evidence all supporting that now, even the people trying to help the president here plainly are having to admit that actually, yeah, what you just described there, Lindsey Graham, that is exactly what happened. Confronted with that reality today from this testimony that was just released from Volcker and Sondland, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham announced that he is no longer reading the transcripts of these witnesses from the impeachment proceedings. He's just refusing to hear any of this anymore. He's just done with it. And that is one way to handle your responsibilities as a United States senator. We've got more to come here tonight, though. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.